Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about Nginx as load balancer and Nginx as a reverse proxy. And in doing so, I'll also explain you the difference between a reverse proxy and a load balancer, right? So probably by the end of the video, you'll actually understand what what uh, a reverse proxy is and what a load balancer is, right? So we'll configure Nginx in both the configuration and see how different it is, right? And how, how Nginx actually work. So without wasting any time, as you can see, I'm on a server. So I, and you probably see me looking uh, sideways because I'm working from that monitor, right? So I'm not working and not looking at my laptop screen. I'm looking at the monitor screen. So please, please bear with that. All right. So, so I have actually launched an EC2 instance and I've installed Nginx and Docker. So let's, let me just show you that. Uh, all right, RPM. Ah. Ah, 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 come on, come on, dude, don't do that. Uh, correct. So you can see Nginx is there, and same as Stalker. So Docker I'm using because I want to mimic multiple machines. So I don't want to launch uh, multiple EC2 instances uh, rather than I'll probably use Docker, right? You can also do the same. Cool, so you can see Docker is installed and Docker is running. Yes, I don't have any container running at this moment, cool. And without wasting any time, uh, let me first go to the browser and this is the public IP of my instance. And you can, as you can see, it is displaying the Nginx homepage, right? So everything is Vanilla, fine, working, okay, cool. Let's go to Nginx Conf. And first we'll configure Nginx as a reverse proxy. Cool. Nginx, Nginx Conf. All right. Come down. We'll come down to the server block over here. It's going to be over here, right? And we'll go into the insert mode and we'll open a location block, right? And inside this block, what I'm going to do is I am going to use a module called proxy pass. So proxy underscore pass. And then I would use HTTP. So I'll be running my website on HTTP or my application on HTTP. So I'll go colon double screen. And it will be 127.0.0. .0 dot one and let's say I'll be running my application on port 8000 right and I'll close the block and I'll open another location block and we'll do the proxy pass again and let's say we run this application on board 7000 right and let's close the block all right so I that's all the configuration you would need uh, when you are running Nginx as uh, reverse proxy, right? Uh, no, 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 not, not all the configuration. I, I missed. So I'm doing everything from the top of my head, right? So, and I knew I was forgetting something. So you actually have to uh, declare or tell the endpoints as well, right? So I do config will be my first endpoint and let's say second endpoint would be hello right so we'll have two endpoints on our application right and let's and that's all the configuration we would need cool so now i'm going to actually docker images so i actually have downloaded one image from the docker hub and that's a simple web application right so I'll be using this image. Uh, if you want, you can also just download this image for testing. 
So Docker run and I'll map the first container to port 8000. Right. And the image name, let's copy that, paste it. And let's do Docker run. Oh, actually, I have run this command. We'll just need to change the port from 8000 to 7000. All right, so Docker PS. So we have two applications running on port 7000 and port 8000, and we have proxy passed those port in the Nginx config. All right, so now let's go to the browser. So let's hit the home page. We still see the Nginx home page, working fine. And one thing we haven't done is we have not restarted our Nginx service. So let's do that. From CTL restart Nginx so it restarted so we have not made any configuration errors or any syntax errors all right so now it has restarted it refreshes again go to the browser and the first endpoint was slash config Let's hit it there is some there's always some problem config so you can see I'm able to hit slash config and it is giving the internal IP of the Docker container. All right, so this is looking fine. Let's get rid of config and instead let's do hello. I'm not sure why it doesn't take it in the first go. Hello. So you can see in hello, you're getting the internal IP of the other container, right? Keep refreshing it the number of requests would increase and that all right so now next what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to stop docker stop one of the containers all right now let's refresh it all right so this is still working let's go to config so you can see config is not working it says the page you're looking for is temporarily not unavailable temporarily unavailable that's because our application is not working so i hope you got what nginx is trying to do so nginx in reverse proxy mode actually looks at the incoming request and then redirects it to the backend server which can actually serve that request right so since you saw that we were trying to go to slash config so it knew where to send the slash config right and that is what reverse boxing is clear if not please put in uh, i mean whatever queries you have in the comment all right now let's quickly configure nginx uh, in the load balancer uh, configuration right so we'll let these containers running right and we'll go to you see nginx conf file again and right above the server block we actually have to define a block called upstream stream and inside this We'll have server and http hash 127.0.0.1 colon 7000 right and then next would be so http colon clash one twenty seven code dot o dot one colon eight thousand and we actually have to give the name of our upstream so I'll call it my underscore backend.
all right let's close this come down and in this case we don't actually need two blocks we just need one block so we'll get rid of this hello block and this time we don't want to serve the application from slash config in fact we'll serve it from the root itself right so let's get rid of this and in the proxy pass what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to give the name of my upstream so that would be my underscore back okay and we also don't need this root because we don't want to serve the root in the next page right so let's comment this out let me see i think that's all the configuration we require uh, at this point uh, i think one thing i have done wrong is that there is no http requirement you just yeah i think this is just like this Ring. yeah so you just need to define the server and what i'm going to do is i'm actually also going to define weightage so weight let's say five so that our requests are equally distributed among the servers right all right that's that's pretty much it Let's save, exit out, and before restarting Nginx, I'm actually going to start this container again. So that we have our applications running on port 8000 and port 7000, that's good. And now I'm going to do restart of nginx so nginx restarted cool and if we come back let's get rid of this enter take some time all right so it's working so you can see now i got the ip of one of the containers if i refresh i'm getting the ip of the other container and the number of requests are increasing all right you can see all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to stop one of those containers come on docker be quick yeah and now if I refresh, 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 just keep an eye on this IP. It doesn't change this, but you don't get any errors, right? So your requests are being served. So I hope you got the gist, right? So in load balancer mode, Nginx forwards the request to the healthy backend, right? So it, it does not look at what kind of request, it just forwards the requests to the healthy backend server. You keep on refreshing, the IP will not change because your I, your one of the containers is not working, right? And so only one container is actually serving the request. All right, so I hope you understand now the difference between reverse proxying and load balancing. Well, that's all I had for this video. I hope you liked the video, guys. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving let me know in the comments if you have any questions regarding load balancing or reverse proxying right i'll be happy to help you and yeah uh, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching